You know, I've been using the lab radar, I call it chronograph, for a number of years, and I have never done a proper video on the lab radar. Oh, I've talked about it a lot, mentioned it, those sort of things. We did do um, a video on its capabilities and some of its capabilities in addition to simply telling us what the muzzle velocity is. And in today's video, I'm going to do a little bit more of a basic review, but I'm also going to really jump into a, a fantastic additional capability that I um, worked on using Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. Oh, you could probably do it with any sort of spreadsheet, but I did it with Excel, uh, and I'm going to be sharing that Excel spreadsheet with you if you want to do the exact same thing. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Let me start by just unboxing this thing. Now, this, by the way, uh, this carry case does not come with the lab radar, the general unit, or the basic unit. Uh, I purchased this through Creedmoor Sports. Uh, in fact, I purchased all this stuff through Creedmoor Sports. Um, and then, of course, the stand is also uh, an additional cost or additional purchase, and that's also from, in this case, Creedmoor Sports, but you can get it lots of different places. So let me just go ahead and take a couple minutes. We're going to set this thing up. Obviously, we're not going to run it. I'm just uh, right here, um, but um, you've seen me run this thing, and, and we'll talk about that whole process in just a little bit. Now, normally, when I get out to the range, I will bring this thing out, this whole carry case out, uh, and I'll place it on a bench. If a bench isn't handy, I could set this thing up uh, at, the, uh, at my vehicle and then move it into its final position. But this is kind of a well-thought-out carry case. I'll start with this. Then another thing that I purchased in addition to the base unit is the um, external battery pack. Um, I did mention this in some previous videos, but let me kind of reiterate this. The lab radar sucks up batteries. It really does. So if you're going to use those double A's, it really is going to go through those things fairly rapidly. And the other thing I'll point out is that you do not want to try to run the lab radar if the batteries aren't, if they're not really fully charged. Uh, if you've been running them for a while and that little battery bar starts kind of going down, uh, you're not going to have very good performance. Uh, I've learned you're going to start missing shots where it just won't record and, and so on and so forth. So uh, this was a very good purchase. And what I also have noticed is that when I turn this little battery pack on to see what its battery level is, it is now saying 92. That's 92%. And that's because I was just using it yesterday. And what I'm going to be doing here shortly is I will be charging this. I don't, I would not want to run it even at 92%. Um, and I've actually seen where I tried to run it at about this. And you start doing a session with 5, 10, whatever different shots you're trying to record. And uh, it doesn't start picking or doesn't pick them up all the time. And I think that's because it uses a fair amount of energy for the system to operate. So, uh, rule of thumb then for me is after I use it a little bit and uh, we get down below 95 percent let's go ahead and recharge it keep it at about 100 percent I like to have it uh, at up 100 percent every time I take it out so a quick charge uh, with this cord that comes with it uh, what you do is you use this end to plug it into the in part of the battery and then this is just a normal USB that you plug into um, a charger. Uh, that, and you probably have lots of those even for cell phones, similar type of thing. But when we're running this, it connects up a little bit differently. Now I'm going to go ahead and mount this, slide it in, tighten it up right over here. And you don't want this thing to be very wobbly when you're using it. Uh, it's not 100% rigid simply because of how it's attached, but this is pretty good right now. The next thing that I'm going to do if I were out, out at the range right now is I would loosen up this large knob here which controls this little ball 
uh, pivot ball right here. And um, this you can think of as an aiming line. And what we want to do is essentially, as it doesn't have to be, there's nothing too precise about this, but you do want this thing pointing at the target. Okay, if the target is over there and you're pointing off at this angle, uh, you may not track it very far and you also may have some other errors. So you want this thing pretty much pointed uh, right at your target. Once you have that done, if you point, you know, if the target is uphill from you, this would be very, very uphill, uh, but then you would tighten this down. Let's say we have it pointing at our target. I then tighten this up again. We want to make sure that that is uh, fairly rigid. Then to utilize the external battery pack, and if you don't have that external battery pack, the double A's go here. You just uh, open that up. And by the way, I should also note you're going to need a SD card uh, to operate this. Well, to make it really functional, you need an SD card. That's another additional purchase. And when I first got this, I saw that they had this kind of heavy-duty nylon Velcro type of stuff. And uh, the recommendation is to place one about here. could be on this side. I don't, I don't know how you would connect it up, though, but it should be about here. And I thought, well, why not place it here? Because what if it falls off? And I uh, talked to the folks over at Lab Radar, and they said, no, we don't really recommend that because what some people have accidentally done is they have finished their shooting session, unlocked this, pulled the unit off, and then these pins ended up putting some stress or being put under stress and it kind of messed things up pretty bad. So uh, I normally sit that right there. Okay. I'll run that cord through there and then plug that in here. Then I can turn this on Now we turn the unit on, and in just a very short while, this thing will boot up, and it's ready more or less for use. By the way, if you get a blinking blue light here, blink, 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 blue light, that means you haven't properly seated this SD card. Then the next thing that I always like to do is I like to start a new session or a new series. To do that, you just press the center button right here, and it asks, do you want to start a new series? Uh, and if you say yes, by the way, you can't go back to the other series and shoot some more rounds in it. So be sure that you are finished with the previous series and want to go on. And I would then say yes. Give it just a little bit. Now I've got 200 and some series recorded. And what I noticed is that as I record series after series and more and more and more series are on this and on that SD card, that as I add an, uh, and another series, I add another series to it, it seems to take a little longer. So what I might start doing is deleting some of the series off of this. I probably do not need those anymore anyway. Obviously, it can do 9,998 or 9,999 9 series uh, before it's going to start automatically overriding uh, the series that are on this card. You'll also want to pay attention to some of these settings. Uh, notice on this screen here that we are looking at a, a setup for a rifle and we can scroll through these things these different options one of the options that I set and set frequently and I actually wish it wasn't so far down the screen or the menu is the projectile weight I want to adjust the projectile weight this is listed as right now a 123 grain uh, projectile that's because I was shooting my 6.5 Grendel uh, just the other day and uh, if you don't want that well then obviously you can simply change it let's say we want to go to a um, 115 grain I have some 115 grains I'm also shooting for my Grendel and I'm gonna go ahead and just set that accept it and we're all set uh, you can go through the, the manual talks about this. There's some other videos that talk about all the different menu settings. So I'm not going to get into that. Those are some of the basics. Uh, but I also want to talk a little bit about 
where your rifle should be or where the firearm should be relative to the lab radar itself. So the lab radar is going to be emitting a signal this way from here outward toward the target and if you have a regular rifle without any sort of muzzle device on it um, or a pistol without any sort of muzzle device on it you want to make sure that that muzzle uh, is on this side on the target side of the lab radar not too far does not need to be too far ahead but you do want it to be a little ways forward if however you do have a muzzle brake or some sort of muzzle device on it then you definitely want to make sure that the muzzle is this way okay so that muzzle blast doesn't damage the emitter and sensors that are on this side this side of the lab radar um, so just pay a little bit of attention to that and you'll be just fine um, the other thing is how far should it be away and there is a setting in here but I have made my setting to be 12 inches so I want to make sure that it is within or about at 12 inches away that gives me a little bit of clearance to make sure that my muzzle blast on those uh, those rifles that do have a muzzle device are jetting away and do not impact or damage this unit in, in any way so let's say about 12 inches you know that would give me a muzzle uh, location of about here okay so once I've got that all set up in that way I will then arm this thing I will press this button once kind of wakes that screen back up if it has gone to sleep a second time changes the screen it's telling me velocity at zero muscle velocity it's just waiting but it's still not armed yet now it's armed notice that orange light has come on and it is actually actively emitting radar right now looking for listening for waiting for a shot and then it's going to try to track that projectile this is when it really sucks up the batteries so if you're not going to be shooting very soon then don't turn this on if you're done shooting um, maybe you shot one round two rounds ten rounds whatever it happens to be you're done go ahead and press this just for a couple seconds and you'll see that screen change now you get to the summary screen of course I see I have no rounds you know no muzzle velocity averages anything like that that's just fine it's exactly what I expected now after we fired let's say um, five rounds or a series five or ten rounds whatever it happens to be we can take a look at this we'll get the average muzzle velocity the maximum highest muzzle velocity the lowest or minimum the extreme spread the difference between the uh, highest uh, and the lowest and we'll get the standard deviation and the number of shots that were actually recorded and are part of all those calculations but that's not where the lab radar capabilities ends and what I want to talk about now the main emphasis of this video is to talk about those additional capabilities and how we can use Microsoft Excel to really leverage uh, the, the, the data that's recorded by the lab radar so let's say we are back in from the range and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove this SD card and I have a reader a lot of folks most folks I suppose have a reader for this SD cards um, on their computers and I will then insert that into that reader and I'll download the entire folder for a given series or if I was out firing a number of series which is kind of my norm I'll download all of those copy those off of this SD card and to my computer now I don't cut them off I don't move them off uh, just because in case there is some sort of error or I accidentally modify a file I didn't want to modify I've got my original copy right here again when you're done with this make sure that you seat this properly you'll feel that hear that click I don't know if that camera microphone picked it up but you hear a little bit of a click uh, on that when it properly seats.